still hear me there? Okay, cool. I, I wanted to make sure that the movie, I had to select a mic that it didn't uh, somehow swipe the mic from uh, the Zoom meeting. Okay, so this class will be different. I, 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 I think that when we learn br bridge, we have to learn to defend, right? Because we're not always the declarer, and as much as we want, we're not always the dummy. Um, so we eventually have to play some defense as we learn how to play bridge. And it's really, really hard to play defense. Um, does anybody have an idea on why it's hard to play defense? What do you think? What makes it so difficult? <laughs> the, Unfortunately, I find myself being that stupid partner very often when I'm playing bridge, and I think, oh my goodness, what, what, what am I doing? What am I thinking? Sure, at the start, we, I mean, the, the problem with defense is we only see one hand as we start, and then we only see the dummy. So, basically, we have our hand and one-third of the remaining cards, right? And and then, but I think it goes even deeper than that. Um, once, if you were to lay down, and I'm sure, may, I know I have, that I have opened up the, the result of a, a hand and looked at all 52 cards, and I still don't see the defense, right? It's, and you click on double dummy, and, and you could spend an hour sometimes, and it's just, it's, it's really hard. Um, that's because not only do you have to play it in, in high heels uh, by not being able to see uh, your partner's cards, you also still have to be a really good card player. You have to know how to take tricks, right? And you have to do, instead of being able to see it by having it laid out in front of you like a dummy, you have to know what's in your partner's hand by inference. The only way to know what's in their hand is by drawing an inference from evidence in the auction, evidence in the dummy, evidence in your own hand, evidence that's provided by your knowledge of what every bid at the table meant, knowledge provided by how the clearer starts to try to make their contract, right? All of this evidence is out there, but you have to know what to look for you have to, and it's gathering from multiple sources, the auction, the dummy, your hand, counting distribution, counting points, and you have to do this all at once. It all has to be going in your head. And if you play on BBO, like a beginner plays on BBO, you have to do this faster than lightning, right? Because everybody just throws their cards in, right? So like click, 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 click. Right? And literally, there is not an expert in the world who plays bridge like that. Right? No expert, no world class player, no very good advanced player plays defense fast. It just doesn't happen. Right? That's, they're just, you know, when people who know what they're doing take their time to think about what the defense can be. Um, so I called the class. Elements of defense. Um, I wanted to call it aspects of the demon. But I thought, how many Buffy and Vampire Slayers fans are going to be out there? Or, or <laughs> aspects of the demon, right? Because there are so many different aspects to defense um, that you have to hold together in your head at once to be able to play this play defense competently. And in this class, I, I mean, I have um, for myself, my goal in life, at the bridge table anyways, is to be a competent defender. That's all I want. I want to be competent, right? I want to know what I'm doing, right? You know, a competent driver isn't someone who can race cars, right? A competent driver is someone who, who can keep from 
bashing into other things, you know, knows when to stop at stoplights. That's competency to me, you know. You know, you can give me a license to be a defender. And um, here, if if people would do this, um, if keep when I forget to put the Zoom link because it scrolls up, and everybody, thank you, uh, thank you, Beth, really appreciate it. Um, here is the the Zoom link is in here. Um, and we'll just keep posting it here. I don't know any other way to do it. Um, we're, it's just the way it is. So back to my train of thought. Um, um, competency. I want to be a competent defender. So this class is going to be slightly different than defense classes that I have attended myself. And from beginning and intermediate defense books that I've read um, because I think that it puts too much it, it ignores this that doesn't really account for the skills that you need to have that you need to develop skills that you may not even recognize that are there for you right evidence that you may not realize you have access to um, instead it's generally a lot of hands where you can always set it. There's usually a gimmick, and you know, and it relies on a signal, right? It's from that's in a book. So, um, you know, I I am pretty confident that when I watch beginners and intermediates play, that when they start signaling, they don't know what they're signaling for. They think they do, and that you know. But the problem is, if you signal without knowing what the defense is. You're really not helping. <laughs> You're really not helping at all. So we're going to tackle it a little bit differently. And I think this was this hit home for me. Um, I was in Washington, sorry, in Philadelphia, playing on the in the North American Paris Champion uh, ship, um, and uh, and I went with a friend and who who we'd qualified together. We, we Decided we would play the Imp Pairs national game, which is where you, I mean, I was looking around the room in awe of the bridge players I recognized who were world class. So we weren't expecting to do terribly well, but all you have to do is scratch on the first day and you get to the second day of that event. Anyways, we came up against this uh, Polish round, I think he's Polish, bald headed guy who's really friendly and, and a woman he was playing with. And they just cleaned our clock, right? Beat us on two contracts, and it was stunning. And when they left, my friend said to me, "Hey, that was Christoph Martins," and 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 he said he was a great writer. And so I went out at the break and bought the guy's book. And it's called the Working Horse. And the thing—it's a book on defense. And his 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 forward is fascinating because he talks about how partnership needs to have these people who are just willing to work on defense. You have to be willing to work hard. And he called that the working horse. And maybe that's a translation thing, but I, it's a cool title. So, and he immediately in these, he starts laying out the hands as normal, like we always see in defense bridge books, but the work he is demanding that you do first is stunning, right? And so I'm still working through the book and it's been a couple years now. Um, because it takes a long time to figure out each hand doing what he wants you to do. So this class is not for people who are absolute beginners. It's not for people who don't want to work at defense, right? Because bridge is a fabulous social game. And you can play defense like you've been playing defense the rest of your life. But if, you, if there is that bit of competition in you and that desire to become a bitter, better defender, then this is my offering, my theory on how to improve. This is my theory on how you get better at being a defense player. And I'm not sure how it's going to work, frankly, because I've never taught defense before. And I know that I'm approaching it from a different angle. 
Now, to highlight that fact, the first few classes, you don't have to be a bridge player at all to take part. Because we're not going to, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about how to draw conclusions about the unseen hands based on the evidence from the auction and, um, and from your hand in the dummy. Okay, and each, and for the first couple weeks, we're going to concentrate on one skill. Okay, and that's it. All right. Um, so it's going to be different. You won't actually play a bridge hand until at least three or four weeks from now. So it'll be different. It's stick with me and see if it's working for you. If it doesn't, I understand. We won't have as many people here next time around. But um, but this is the work I think we need to do. And so let's get at it. Um, the class will require at least a minimum amount of you people to actually take part um, on the chat line because uh, like the law lawyer I am coming from a law school background, I ask a lot of questions and I want to hear answers. Right? I want you to be doing the thinking. It won't, you know, I don't want to just lecture. All right, so it's going to be it's going to be interactive. I need responses. If you are if you are locked in the Zoom room and not in BBO, I understand. I want you to do the work though. I can't. I won't be seeing chat there. I don't think. I won't be seeing chat in the Zoom because I've got the one screen up. So I'll just need you'll just need to do the work yourself. Okay. And this is what we're going to start with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, um, I've, I've heard before that um, I'm a better first date than a second. Um, so this is what we're going to do. First question to you. How do you see your partner's hand if you're not cheating? And what is it that you're looking for in your partner's hand? Oops. This is the right, let me get the right deals up. Deal source. Okay. What the file, the, the, the hands that I'm using here are, um, are actually all hands that I have saved that I was playing three no Trump and I failed to make. <laughs> It's a long, it's a long folder, um, and I saved these hands when I failed to make them, and other people were making them, and so that I could learn how to do them. But I, I managed to save them, and I, I have worked through them all, as to clear. Um, some of them you won't see all the hands today, but, and we won't get to that. But I thought you might appreciate these are not quite random; they were randomly dealt. I saved them. I haven't created them for a defense class at all. That's bad. Let's see. I want you to be. Somebody just gave very good information there, but I can control it as well. Your view of the hand, seeing all those hands, that's what we're hoping to get to, is being able to see all the hands. And it's actually much easier than you think. Once just if you practice it all the time. So South opens one no trump. I have no bid. I pass. There's a transfer to hearts. South doesn't like hearts. Robot is offered a second suit of diamonds. We see three no trump. Pass, pass. And um, let's try a, a random lead. There's a transfer to hearts and they bid diamonds. Those are my suits. They bid three no trumps. So why don't we try leading through strength? All right. Uh, let's stop. I did this wrong. Hold on one second. I apologize. There we go. Got it to stop. Um, and I'm going to start it over.
just move on to the next one. Sorry about that. I've got to pull the robot out so that we can just see the lead and the dummy when I'm on lead. Otherwise, they start playing. And I don't want to be sitting at all the hands. Um, I'm passing. We'll just move on to the next one. We can come back to the first one if we have time. A club. Two no trump. Uh, I have no idea. That's got it. That's bandwidth stuff. I'll, I'll sit closer to the computer. Okay, good. All right. So do you all know how to pull up the auction? You click on the little box that says to no, to no Trump, and it shows you what the auction was. Okay. So we want to be able to see the auction. It'll be, be in the movie. So South bid a club, North bids a no Trump, uh, South responds to no Trump. Okay, that's the auction. And my question to you is, how many points does your partner have? And I guess the first question I have for you is, why would you want to know how many points your partner has? Right? Hopefully I haven't gotten so garbled that I can't be heard. Yes, yeah, those are some of the right ideas, definitely. I mean, the reason we want to know how many points our partner have is because we want to know if they have any tricks. For instance, in the heart suit, wouldn't it be nice to know where if my partner has the ace or king? And wouldn't it be nice to know that without just simply playing a heart? Or in the club suit where the ace and king are missing, wouldn't it be nice to know if it's, oh, sorry, the ace is missing. Wouldn't it be nice to know if they have the ace of clubs? Or even in the diamond suit, wouldn't it be great to know if it's possible that they could take the third round of diamonds? Right. So this is why we want to know what's in our, in our, part, in our partner's hand. That will help us decide what's in North's hand. Right? And when we look at the auction, we can see that North bid one no trump. So North has, uh, Alan says six to eight points. And I think that sometimes we could go broader. They, not, not even beginning to think about suits yet. Don't even care about that, Joan. All we're going to talk about today is bridge. I mean, is points. In fact, as I said, you don't need to know how to play bridge for today's lesson. It actually might get in the way. All right. All we're doing is making inferences about points. Now, because the robots are so nice, right, they actually tell us what their bids mean. Right? So the one club opening, for instance, says 11 to 21 points, high card points. Right? It's a very broad range. But then they bid to no trump. Right? And for the robots, they play that um, as 17 to 18 points. I think I've seen them with 19. Right? So when we see that one no trump bid, just look at the label. So we can, we can actually decide how many points are in South's hand. Right? So let's, let's call it 17 points. Right? Let's add to that our points, 6, 7 points. Right? So we're all up to 24 points. And then we think about robots bid. It's one no trump bid. Okay? Right, which is one no trump in that situation is generally six to nine. Now, in this process of counting points, it's sometimes best to sort of draw a middle ground and figure a point or two above, a point or two below. Right, so let's say that with that one no trump, um, it was six to nine. But what happened when South invited with two no trump? 
promising 18 points, 17, 18 points. Right? North was not interested in going further. Right? So if I can tell the North, there we go, if I tell the non-bridge players who are sitting around the tables or those who've trusted me to forget about bridge for now, right? We can say that when they when they refused to accept that invitation, they were six or seven max. Let's give them six and remember that it could go a little higher. Right? So we got 18, 17 in South's hand, seven and six or seven in North. That's 24, 30, my 31. So how many points must East have? I like that ish. Is everybody caught up with the math? By the way, I am an incredible mathematician. Definitely it is an eight or nine, Joan. If he had eight or nine, he would have gone to three no Trump, right? Pro his partner has promised 17 to 18 points. So we were able to make an inference. And this is the evidence that I'm talking about. This is the evidence that I'm talking about on this single aspect of the demon, right? The where are the points aspect. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. That definitely eight or nine. Yeah, we go to we go to east and now we're in the ballpark, right? We know our partner could have up to nine points. Now, what's nice to do, and once you practice this over and over again, is you actually start drawing a range for your partner. You will say, based on this auction, my partner has seven to ten points. Right? So so now we have we have a number for our partner. Let's just see if we're right. East has four, five, six, seven, eight points. The nine-ish from, from Les was correct. Right. This seems elementary, but I swear to God, most beginning and intermediate players don't do it. Don't count like this before every hand. And I know that for two reasons. First, it took me a long time to realize the critical nature of this count. Okay. And it's called the rule of 40, I suppose, because there are 40 points. But this count is critical. Okay. The, co the count is critical. And if you don't do it, then you're not playing good defense. And it takes time to be able to do it well. And that's the other reason I know people don't do it, is because I sit at bridge tables and play with y'all, and you're just playing defense without ever stopping. There's no pause. No one ever stops to think. So how, either you all have brilliant computer-like brains and can count these points out just like that, in which case you don't need to be in this class, or you're not doing the work. I know that it took me a long time to begin to do the work, to stop hoping for honors in my partner's hand to stop hoping, oh, I hope he has the king of clubs, right? And start coming up with some numbers that make it either impossible or possible for him to have the king of clubs. And so this is what we're going to do today. We're going to count. So 12-point hand. No, sorry, 8-point hand. Like I said, I am fabulous at math. I'll pass. We get a club, a diamond, a heart, right, and a spade. This for the robot is for suit forcing. Okay, this is actually the smarter way to play this. Right, one spade here is for suit forcing. Sets the game force. Right, so we have one club, right, eleven to twenty-one. We have one diamond, which is six points or maybe more. We have one heart. We've at least now not jump shifted, so we've limited limited this to about 17, 18 points. One spade, 13 or more points. So we're, if we're being an active passer, we're actually keeping track of this stuff as it happens. And we get a critical bid, the one no trump. All right? So if we're sitting there thinking, right, we will immediately assign about 12 to 13 points is the wise thing to do with this. If they end up accepting an invitation, you can almost always say it's 13 to 14. If I'm desperate playing defense, I make it a 12, just to make something possible. Right? So I will say over and over again, 
we have to play defense very optimistically. Okay. Then we get a two club bid. And so, my goodness, this auction's going on and on. Four clubs. They've got a suit. And they stop in five clubs. Who bid clubs first? North. So East will be on lead. Good. All right. When we're sitting in the third seat, right, we've paid attention to the auction, but now we're happy not to have to do the work before we lead because we get to see how many points the dummy has. Right? So they have 8, 3, 11, 14. I have my four queens. I'm sorry, I didn't count that jack, did I? So 8, 11, and 4 is 15. 8, right, with my queens is 23. So the scene hands are 23. What do we know about the unseen hands? And there we have North's one no trump bid. Which could be as few as 11 or could be as much as 14. Right? So 34 to 37 points. Everybody with me on the math? Believe me, I do terrible math, so tell me if I'm counting wrong. Right? So we have a range of 34 to 37, which means our partner could have how many points? Yeah. So we could call that what? What's the middle number? Three, four, four and a half points. Partner has four and a half points. Four and a half ish, as Les would say. Sure enough, five. To round it upwards from our four and a half to a five. All right, so this time, let's have you all doing the work. Um, Grab the Zoom link and put it down there again in case somebody loses it. Five, six, seven, four, eleven. I get to open this time. And I'm going to have to lead. So let's leave this up for a second and think about it. Um, actually, it might work better for the move if I do this, since I'm on lead. All right, everybody, I'm just going to lead the king of spades. No reason not to. All right, so I have, let's do the math. What are we, where do you think, how many points do you think the declarer has? Okay, so far we're, we got 14 to 8, 14 to 19 spread here. The participants. All right, so... Let's let's try the math. We got nine points in the in the dummy, plus what I have five, six, seven, four, eleven, which I believe is twenty. I wouldn't necessarily go by the balancing double. We should be able to get this closer. We should be able to get this closer. There was a double in the last seat, and partner bid three diamonds. So 
wouldn't be lovely to know what three diamonds is, and now we see, well, that's only nine. And he's gone to game. That was enough for him. Look at the widespread for that three no trump there. Right, if you can op open up the auction by clicking on three no, and that should bring up the auction. Right? And you can see what the robot means, 18 to 25. That's seven points difference there. If you cut that in half and give them three and a half, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, maybe, but maybe he's got just what we need. Who knows? So what was it? 18 and uh, that's seven point spread. So like 21 and a half ish. Let's give him 21 j just to be nice, which equals to the rest that we have 41 points. It doesn't look like our partner has any points, right? So if we were defending this hand, the one thing we wouldn't want to do is look for our partner to have the ace of clubs. Right? Or the um, ace of hearts. We can be assured that they don't have those kind of values. So if, if we want him to take part we want him to have anything to do with our defense, it's going to have to be on some other basis than, than um, having the cards. Let's see if, let's see if we're right on the, that he has nothing. Or let's see if, uh, let's see, let's look at the, what if, what if, uh, what if South only had 17 points? If that was the minimum he said he could have, right? Eighteen. Let's give him eighteen. R eleven. Thank you, Pat. Plus the nine, we can see. That that gives our partner a queen or two jacks. That's what I would think of at this point, right? You can think your partner has nothing; it's hopeless, or you could say, "No, my partner has a queen that he's going to get on a finesse or something." Right. He could have a queen. Woohoo! Oh, he's got four points because South was in the balancing seat, apparently. He had 8, 12, 14, 16. Is that right? Yeah, 16. Give him an extra jack, too, because Robot stretched, sitting where he was at, as Carol suggested earlier. So our partner ends up with Queen Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, I'll just tell the truth. Although um, they think that they do, they they think they're telling the truth. So it's okay. Um, and they can ignore the actual points in their hands and just pretend reality is as they think it is. Um, and who's going to argue with them? All right. <laughs> I, I will say that I have a very good relationship with the bots. I play with them constantly. I, uh, I don't, I'm not a robot whisperer by any means, but um, I do believe that, that you can play bridge with the bots. I, I really believe you can play defense with the bots, right? Because uh, the bots don't signal, right? They don't make your standard, <laughs> they don't make your standard uh, leads, they, they do all sorts of things based on algorithms that they won't share with you if you could understand. But, but you actually can play defense with them if you stop relying on them and do the work. Okay, like here. A one no trump op opener makes counting fabulous. All right, because now we can say 16 plus or minus one. Um, I got nothing to add. We get to three no trump. He's going to be the dummy. So that puts me on lead. So I'll just go ahead and pass it out. And we can see the dummy. And we can uh, figure this out. We know they have how many combined points at a minimum. Yeah. 
what do they have as a maximum? At what point would Robot in the north, let's call him Maurice Gibb, at what point would Maurice start looking for a slam? How many points would he have? Fifteen and seventeen is thirty-two. I like sixteen. I'm with Ellen. I like sixteen. That's where I start looking. Let's see what the robot says. If you click on, if you click on his bid in the auction, you should be able to see what three no Trump means to him. He goes for fifteen. So sixteen is where he starts looking for slam, which is where I I start looking. I look at a good fifteen, and give me a sequence or something, an extra trick. That way I will look, um, but. Robot's saying the most he could have is 15. Oh, you guys are great. Thank you, Pat. So we're, we've got 17. We've got 25, right, if it's 17 and 10. If he has 15, then it is seven, uh, sorry, 16 and 10 is 26, because we're going to stay with that 16 number in south. We're going to give him 16 plus or minus 1. And so 26 points. Two, 31 points, which means our partner has how many points? I want a range on this one because that's five points there, 26 to 31. And what do I have? Six. So that's 32 to 37 with the hands that we figured out. So he could have three to eight, as Alan says. So in our defense, right, we could sort of look on the positive side and think about, well, what would be really sweet to have him holding? Like, could he hold the king, queen of hearts or something? Make king, queen, fifth of hearts? He could hold two aces. Yeah, I mean, this there are this opens up all sorts of potential. And if he only holds three points, well, that's life, right? So we'll make a lead. Playing no Trump here. What uh, they don't have any. They North was not interested in majors, so probably if anyone's holding majors, it's in South. So do I really want to lead up to strength? I don't know. I'm going to lead the nine of clubs. I lead like a robot. Yeah, led up to strength in clubs anyways. All right, so now we see how many North has. Five, seven, eight. Five is 13. They did have a good hand, didn't they? If you click on the numbers next to the three no trump box, you can look at the last trick that was played. All right. For the Zoom people, I'm just doing it so that they can see it. Um, so he didn't play honors, any, any honors there. So he has six, seven, eight, and five, 13 points plus the 16. And now we can come up to a better understanding of what our partner has. Right? 13 plus nine plus six. Where's that 19 come from? Sorry, 16 plus nine. Nine's mine. Sorry. Six, seven, eight, five, thirteen, sixteen, thirteen, plus mine, which were six. And now we know what our partner has, right? He's got five points, give or take a point. That's pretty accurate. This has to be done every single hand you defend. You have to do the math. If you want to compete, right? like I said before, if you just want to play socially, you don't want to bother yourself with this, then don't. But I will say that it gets really, it gets a lot easier when it becomes a habit. Okay, it gets easier. Right? And then you can turn your thoughts to bridge questions like, well, what can I expect my partner to have? 
right? What works for us, you know? Could he, does, who, where's the king of hearts, you know? Should I be leading through the ace, jack of spades? That diamond finesse, leading through the diamonds might be good if my partner has the king, right? What is going on in the club suit, you know? We got a little bit of a clue there when my partner played the 10. Why would he play the 10 over my nine, right? So that's not looking all that good. So anyways, what did we come up with? Us five points or so. So I'll claim, let's take a look. Five, six points, right? Five points plus or minus one. Right? And it turns out he's got some diamonds. Not the best place, but there it is. I look at some of these hands and I think, how did I not make one three no trump when I played this originally? Love it. Stamen. Two diamonds. How many points does two clubs promise? That was a trick question. They play garbage, Damon. They could have nothing. You could just be looking for a better fit. But this one, this two no trump is telling for the robots. Nine points. So even before we finish, we know that they are at nine plus 16. So 25-ish. 25 plus or minus one. We can add our points to it. 26, 27, and 6, 33. Statement does not promise 8. Most, most competent, most advanced pairs will have some form of garbage or crawling stamen in their repertoire. Um, so we've got to look out for that. So 6, 7, 8. Points we got, uh, and onto their 26 is 34. Boy, that brain creaks into gear. 34 points. Our partner has about six points. Six points, give her one plus one or minus one. Let's check out if we're right or not, which means I have to make a lead. Can someone think of a reason not to lead clubs? Yeah, I mean, my partner didn't double the artificial bid, but that would mean he would have, you know, a, an honor to top a suit because that would be willing to play there. Yeah, so I think I think probably even though I've got, you know, normally when you've got a suit that's headed by a ten, you know, or less, you'd think, oh, I'll never get that set up. But I got an, I got a couple of entries. I got the Ace of Hearts, maybe a club entry. So I'll go ahead and try third from the ten. Yeah, and I hit a five four suit. Partner came through with the king though. All right, so let's see what if we're if our estimates were right. Five, seven, we said you could have six plus or minus one. I think that's what we said, right? So we, we're figuring this out. We're seeing through the backs of the cards as to what kind of points our partner has. And this is only one aspect of the demon. This is only one aspect of the evidence that we're, that we're going to be looking at as we play defense, which is how many points does my partner have? Let's do some more. It's going to be a drill class, I think, for the first few weeks because I want us to be doing this stuff constantly. And if you're serious about sticking with this with me here, and, and uh, no, no, no bad feelings if you don't want to stick. Uh, some of you may think this is elementary, but I don't see you doing it. The ones that I play with and see at the tables and watch in the tournaments, I don't see us doing this hard work. Right? And I know for a fact that until a certain point in my development, I didn't die there. All right, so one no trump, he's 16 plus or minus, and I have five, six, 13 points. Nothing to bid. 
Now, when I, I, you know, you will do this different ways. In my head, when this is going on, I like to call myself an active passer, right? Because I did some work on this hand. I know that between South and myself, we have 29 points, plus or minus one. We get the stamen bid. Two spades. This is a very good way. My partner, one of my partners, taught me this one. In uh, it's, we're going to play it this way. I think this is a very good bid. Is to bid two spades here. She informs me it's expert standard. Um, so this is an invitation with uh, um, four spades and nine points. Sweet, huh? So. 25, plus or minus 1. Add my cards, 30, 31, 37. How many points does my partner have? Plus or minus 1. Ellen says 2 because she's just pessimistic, I guess. All right. And uh, all right. So let's see if we can. I'll claim, and then we can look at them. Oh, Ellen was correct. <laughs> Queen of Spades. And it's a very nice hand. Her spade suit is wonderful. I, I, now, I have now made it Ellen's suit. I get hand. Uh, right? Queen 10 9. What a great holding when I'm holding the king. We should be able to get three spade tricks. Four with the Ace of Clubs. Unfortunately, my king of diamonds is buried underneath the ace. Maybe that's why I didn't. I, I don't know how I managed to not make this, but uh, I didn't. All right, so next one. We will go to 505 to kind of make up for the uh, rough start. Club. I have six points. A rebid of a club. And two no trump. All right. So let's figure out how many points our partner has. the auction up for the zoom people one club one heart two clubs two no trump that's probably the critical bid there right he made an invite Yeah, I mean, we seem to have a range there of 8 to 10. I think I'd be in the 9 to 10 range, but Alan has already proven her credibility. Um, we give 2 no Trump 11 points. All right, then add, add ours, 12, 14, 17, and add the dummy, 23, 28, 29, 30. So 10 points are missing. So I would probably say 10 points plus or minus. Right? I, you know, 
Don't know what Robot has, whether he would have gone to game with 12 or not, but he says 11 on his tab, right? So let's give him 11. He'll fudge a little bit, but I would say 10, 10 points, um, maybe 9. Nine. And they had 11. So math was faulty in my head somewhere. <laughs> they had exactly what they said. Six, seven. Oh, no, they have 10. Yeah, they have 10. Every hand we're going to do this. Between this week and next week, I would like that you guys to have this second nature. If you play... If you play 50 to 100 hands between now and next week, I don't know how many you play these days. I think I play more online than I normally do. But but I think if you hit 30, 40, 50 hands of bridge, you should have this down. It should be second nature. All you have to do is remember to do it. And not as an afterthought. Not as, wow, maybe we can beat this. I should count the points. But literally, just count the points. Before you do anything else, before you turn on your bridge mind, count the points. Do it while it's fresh, while the auction's fresh in your head. 4, 8, 10, 13. Woo. Somebody could throw the Zoom link down there. Appreciate it. Um, 9, 10, 13, double... Two spades, which is a jump in response to the double. I don't know. When I learned this, I always learned that you jump from 9 to 11, 12. Basically, you jump with a hand that is um, uh, 9 to, in, you know, to the point where you would go to the game. But once you hit about 12 or 13 or a good 12, basically you bid, your, you bid game. Or you at least bid the opener, bid the, uh, opener suit. Two clubs here to say, hey, points are game. Let's look. Um, so this is probably an invitational hand. Um, we could call it 10, 11 points. Right, what I have? 9, 10, 13. So I'm already thinking between me and South, there's 24, being an active passer. 9 I'm no Dwayne Haskins, that's for sure. Um, Three hearts is a really strong bid, right? He's changing suit. He doubled and corrected. So maximum hand. How can you have a maximum hand? I have an opener. 9, 10, 13, 18, 31. And South says they have an invitational hand. That's like 41 points already. And they end up in a second suit. So North has a big hand. South claims to have an invitational hand. It's got to be. A, all right. So now we get to 41 points. So what the first thing we want to do is say, well, you know, if that's all, if that's what's happening, I don't even want to, I don't even want to defend this. This is terrible. My partner can't help. Or we could give him his absolute minimum. Let's give 18 to North and, and, and like a nine to South. Right, and uh, that's what 27, 30, 31, 36, 39. That gives at least a point to our partner. Five diamonds, so uh, we, we can hold them to five. Maybe if uh, North has two clubs and uh, South has the king. So better not lead that suit. I'm just going to lead through strength. Oh, did I? So let's claim here. See what our partner had. He had a little less than than one. <laughs> King of Clubs was in the wrong spot. So now we know why I went down on this one, because I was in three no-trump, and 
robots managed to make uh, five diamonds. All right. Like I said, all, I'm saying that because all of the hands that we're looking today were not designed for defense, which, uh, I mean, it's, which when we go to bridge classes, usually we, we, we know that there is a solution, right? Well, here's the problem. We know there's a solution. It makes a hell of a lot easier to figure it out. I will tell you that sometimes when I play, you know, I think David has his, Uvid has that class, and, and Karen has a class, and I know they're using teaching hands, and I and it makes it really difficult for me to play, because I, I always, I just look, I mean, there was one early on that was clearly an elimination, and I got a top for it, but I'm pretty darn sure it was because I was just sitting there looking for the technique that they were looking for, figured out it was an elimination, thought, okay, that's how I do it. It never happens at the bridge player. At the bridge table, you never know whether you can set it, right? You never know whether just holding them to the contract is going to get you a top, right? So you gotta you got to work a lot harder. Five six. So these are hands. I, this is these are all from a folder that I saved of three no trump hands that I failed to make and obsessively saved and then reviewed and figured out all the reasons why I couldn't do it, why I screwed them up, and then thought, oh, well, I might as well keep them for my own students and see if they can figure them out. Um, so pass. This is the last hand. Pass. They get to three no trump. So let's look at it a second. 16 in south, 1922 between south and myself. Right? In regard to points, when a person makes a nice, strong, limited bid like that, it is just like they leaned over to us and said, hey, I have 16 points. Right? So we want to take advantage of that fact. Um, and six, 16, 17, and 5 is 22. Remember that bid that uh, they did before where they bid um, two spades and that was invitational? And this time they're playing a convention called Smolin. This is one of those that uh, gadget-driven people like myself gather pretty early to play. It promises five hearts and four spades. and gives the, the uh, declare, the one no trump opener, the option of playing either in hearts with three or spades with four, he doesn't have that, or three no trump if he doesn't have the, uh, the spade suit. So, definitely has a game force hand though to push that hard, so we'll just have to figure out how many. All right, so let's see. I think that I'm wondering if that if we could come up with a well. Let's just look at the dummy, and we don't have to. Um, seven, eight, eleven in the dummy. Click on the box here, so we can see that um, North did not play an honor. So all he's got left are these honors: seven, eight, three, eleven. Plus sixteen is twenty-seven. Plus or minus one. 28, 31, 33, plus or minus one. So I'm not, I'm kind of a fan of, I, I think I'm coming up with seven, right? And I really think that it's, it's kind of nice to do plus or minus. Plus or minus one. Seven plus or minus one. If I counted right. Five, six, 13, 14, 17, and 16 is 33. 7. So there's 7 out there, but if South started with 15, then it's then um, our partner could have 8. If you started with 17, you could have uh, 6. So 7 plus or minus 1. Six seven. Just like seeing through the backs of the cards in regards to points. All right, so the point of, the, of this exercise, this drill, is to show that this is possible. Next week, 
we may try some more point counting using suits, right? These have all been this one no trump hand being uh, bids, these limiting bids have provided us the strongest clues. But these kind of clues are also available with suit contracts. Okay, and next week we will incorporate. Um, we will incorporate some suit contracts into it as we begin to look at another aspect of the demon, right? which is distribution. Okay, we're going to start trying to figure out what we know about the suit distribution while we're literally sitting on the first trick and seeing how close we can come to determining what everybody has suit-wise. Now, if we know the distribution and we know the possible points, we have to be getting awfully close to being able to play some defense. And that's what we're going to be looking for. All right. So until next week, um, you know, I wish, I hope, I don't know if that's true or not. Alan, if you would do me a favor and just keep track of it and compare it, I'll send it out as I go. Um, it's got the password on it, and I'm not sure if, this, if the password gets generated the same as the class one. Oh, great. So if you've got the Zoom, you've got it. Wonderful. Okay. So anyways, I know it's going to be a little weird. I will try to keep it sane and entertaining. And um, I appreciate everybody who's taking part in Zoom people. Thank you for being out there. There's a bunch of you who have shown up from Woodbury Club, uh, Bridge Club, um, which is a... I'm going to just say this, that if, if these people are anywhere near... As nice a people as Kathy May, who you all have played bridge with, many of you have played with, then uh, then they that would be a really good place to go play bridge. Um, and really happy to have them here. All right, take care.